Hi guys, André Rodrigues here and welcome to the complete presentation of Tangent Wave Booster 2. In this video, I'll show you how to use every function and all the things that TWB2 can do. But before we continue, I have to ask you a favor. If you like this project, please do a donation. It took a lot of hard work and time to create Tangent Wave Booster 2. And if you like this project and want that I keep doing new updates and do, uh, creating new features and even maybe create a port version for Apple systems, you can help me. Please do your donation. In our website, there's a QR code where you can click on it if you are using your PC or you can use your camera phone to read the QR code and goes to the donation page. Okay, let's see everything that Tangent Wave Booster 2 can do for you. So guys, we have here my uh, Tangent Wave panel and you're seeing the DaVinci Resolve screen too. So I'm gonna show you every function that Tangent Wave Booster 2 has. This can take a while because there's thousands of functions here. So I'm gonna try to be fast but um, we have to be patient because there's a lot of functions, okay? An important thing that I tried to do here, it makes things automatic. So um, when you choose some tool here and you're using some of the panels, uh, it will change automatically to that tool. So for example, I'm in edit mode and you're seeing my edit page on DaVinci Resolve, but if I press F9 and go, for example, to HDR wheels, and if I use some tool here, let's say I'm going to use this trackball, it will automatically change to the color page and to the HDR panel and start to using the second wheel. I'm not touching anything. Uh, I will move here. And as you can see, I'm in the color page and now I'm in the HDR uh, shadow moving the second color wheel there, as you can see. Uh, and if I change to primaries and move again, I will change automatically to primary wheels and start to use gamma or if I change to uh, my curves, custom curves and start to use my uh, luminance intensity it will bring automatically to custom curves and um, if I change to uh, power windows and add a linear power window it will automatically change to that panel and add that linear power window so if I back here and go back to edit mode and try to do something, let's say I'm going to add an in point, in out point, I'm, I'm going to turn this to the left and goes to edit page and puts an in point on my timeline. So uh, everything is automatic. The first thing we can talk about is about the right side of our controller. There's some uh, default functions on these buttons, doesn't matter what mode you are. And I'm going to show you what all this do. First one is up arrow and down arrow. And here you can change between the banks here on top knobs. So you press up and we'll change between them. And one important thing that I try to do is keep things simple without create thousands of banks for each thing. So for the knobs and for the buttons, you only have one or two banks in each mode only hdr wheels that has a lot of tools uh, you have just one uh, bank for knobs and you have three banks for buttons and you will understand why because normally you have only one bank sometimes two banks for the knobs and you have always two banks on the buttons because the second button is the color interface uh, shortcuts i will explain this later but normally you only will toggle between one and two, one and two, and that's it. Only the HDR wheel uh, has three banks, but the, ha the, the rest of it uh, only has one or two banks at maximum. As you can see here, you have one bank here and you have two banks here. And this one you will not use, I think, for nothing. I just put it, it here because sometimes someone wants to move the mouse using the knobs. And if the person like that, he can use these knobs to move mouse X and Y, but normally we're gonna use the trackball. I will explain this soon. So that's it. You have here the changing between banks. Up arrow change the knobs banks and down arrow change the buttons bank. 
blocks and uh, pressing Alt key, you have here on the first button uh, the option to open the DaVinci Resolve project windows, okay? And pressing Alt down arrow, you're gonna pause the Tangent Wave booster, which means when you press OK here, it's not paused here yet, so it's still working, but if I press OK now, it's paused. So it doesn't matter if I click or do something here, uh, nothing will happen. So I can go to my browser or my Windows Explorer, any, anywhere else, uh, everything will be stopped. There's no problem if I do something like this, nothing will happen on my other softwares, okay? Uh, when I back to DaVinci Resolve and I want to keep working with it, I just press out and down my arrow again and it's running now, I just press OK and it's fine. It's running again, everything will work again. Okay, so I already said the F9 goes to the modes, right? And if you press out F9, you go to the full screen and back. Okay, for these buttons here, if you press it, uh, of course, we will play back. And if I press again, we'll play back, play back two and four times and eight times. And of course, if I press in the middle button, we'll stop. And here I will uh, play forward, play backwards. So that's it. This is normal here. So let's keep going here. If I use these three buttons here, of course, I will play back or play back faster two times, four times, eight times, or stop or play uh, backwards, as you can see and I can press a lot of times to make it faster. Uh, I can navigate between the clips, pressing here. Uh, as you can see, it's changing on the media pool because that window is selected. So I can turn this knob and now I'm on my timeline and that's it, I'm going from clip to clip. And if I go to the color page here, let's say uh, I'm here in the color page and I use this, I will change between the clips too. It's the same and the playback and everything else will, will be the same. The same thing for this jog wheel. It's frame by frame step. As you can see, I'm going frame by frame and backing frame by frame. And if I'm in a JIT mode, it will be the same thing frame by frame and back. I'm on the timeline. I can go to my preview window, for example. So I'm going to open here uh, something on my preview window and it will be step by step on preview window. Okay, pressing Alt key and moving this jog wheel, I'll go automatically to the color page and will navigate between the nodes. As you can see, I'm navigating between the nodes to the right and to the left. It goes according to the number of the nodes. So one, two, three, four, and back to one, and that's it. On a JIT page, this will do nothing, of course, will bring you automatically to the color page and start to choosing what node you want to work. All right, what more? On the F keys, we have some functions normally used for the color page. So in F1, F2, F3, and F4, I have the play hats. And F5, I reset the play hat. So as you can see, uh, if you look here, there's one play hat, but uh, and I can press F2, and now I have the second playhead and I can put it wherever I want, uh, in any position. Um, I can press F3 and put the C playhead wherever I want. And F4 will create the D playhead. And if I press F5, it will reset all the playheads. And I can navigate between the playheads. So let's say I have like three different playheads here. So, okay, I can just pre keep pressing and I will navigate between them. And this is very useful because you can go to full screen and navigate between the playheads so you can compare different images. Uh, and on F5, as I said, we reset it. On F6, we're gonna turn off and on whatever nodes are selected. So one node or I can have more than one node selected and I will turn on and off that uh, selection. Okay. With F7, I'm going to apply a grade to my clip. So if I press F7, uh, all that grade that is selected here is applied to my clip. And with Alt F7, I'm going to get a I'm going to grab a steel. So Alt F7, it's 
grabs a steal. Okay, discover from F1 to F7. F8, I have uh, the mouse mode. So if I press F8, you can see there's a mouse now here, which means these buttons, this jog, and this trackball is working as a mouse. So I can go fast. So I don't need to use my mouse on my keyboard. I have a red, color red 2 works using only my tangent panel here, just with that. I didn't touch on mouse or keyboards. I just come here with my mouse if I need. Uh, almost never, but sometimes I need the mouse. So I choose the mouse mode and go wherever I want. And here I have left click or uh, here I have the right click. And that's it. Uh, and if I have to scroll something, uh, let's say I'm go to edit mode here. I can scroll using this this jog wheel. As you can see, it's the scroll of the mouse. So when I press again, the the mouse uh, name just disappear, and this is not a mouse anymore. is working as default for the tangent wave booster. And I can press Alt and F8 and make this the mouse because sometimes someone is left at the hand, so it will be better used with the left hand. So this will be the mouse, not this one, if you use Alt F8. And that's it, Alt F8 will turn on and off, and F8 will turn on and off the mouse mode. F9, you know, it's the modes, or Alt F9, the full screen, doesn't matter if you are on the JIT page, or if you are in the color page, it will go to the full screen. Okay, so now we're gonna see what Alt F keys do. And for the first one, if I have one or more clips here, I have two or more clips here selected, and I do some chains. So let's say I did this, and I press Alt F1, it will ripple the same treatment of this node number one for each clip in the node number one. So we'll do the same change, okay? And uh, you're not seeing this because it's on bottom of this. So it did the same change for the three clips. So Alt F1 is ripple node correction. Alt F2, if I have different clips here with different sources, so as you can see, I have two different clips here, which was made with a different camera and uh, in a different day. If I press Alt F2, I will toggle between source mode, as you can see here, I have source here on the timeline, or the hack mode. So the first one, the hack mode is uh, the timeline order. So the clips will appear as they are in the timeline. And the second one is the source mode, which is uh, which put all the clips together. The, the, the clips that are from the same camera and the same day and the same time, they will be together. And you can toggle between them doing Alt F2. With Alt F3, you can go to full view and back on color page. On F9, you go to full screen, and F3, you go to the full view. The Alt F4 key will open the key animation window. So if you need to do some keyframe animation, you just press Alt F4 and do whatever you have to do. Uh, and to open the scopes back, you just come here to scopes mode and choose what scope you want to use. We're gonna go there soon. With Alt F5, I'm gonna bypass all the grading treatments. So let me say I did something here. And if I press Alt F5, will bypass, doesn't matter if I am here or on a JIT page, it will work. With Alt F6, I'm gonna uh, turn on and turn off all the nodes. So if I have a lot of nodes here, it will, it will turn on and off because one node is F6, Alt F6 will turn on and off all the nodes. And to finish out F7, we'll grab a steel. So you just choose your clip and press Alt F7 and it's gonna grab a steel. Discover all the F keys and there's uh, some out functions on these buttons here too. So if I have a treatment like this, let me do something here and do something here and choose another node and do something here. And then if I press Alt, and the right key arrow here, I will reset that node, that specific node, as you can see. See? But if I press the left arrow, it will reset all the nodes, but the node tree will keep there. And I did that because 
I normally work with a, a fixed tree, so I don't want to reset all the trees and lose all the nodes and have to apply again the power grade. I just use uh, a fixed tree so I can reset all the nodes without reset the node tree. If you want reset the node tree, there's an option here on nodes and scopes called reset all node grades that will reset everything, including if you choose uh, more than one clip and press here, reset all node grades, it will reset everything in all the clips selected. To finish here, we have out stop to save your project and we have an out uh, play backwards to control Z, it's the undo and for play back, play forwards is hit do. So I'm gonna go to a edit page because it's easier to see that. Uh, let's say uh, I'm here, I'm gonna delete this and I'm gonna select this and swap with this. Um, let me go here and swap the clip. And if I press out here, I'm gonna go back in whatever I did or go forward doing hit do. This covers all the right side, which is default, and there's more four buttons default modes here, which will work, doesn't matter where you are. They are these buttons here, and without press these two buttons here, they are used for cop, paste, and when you press out, cut, and paste attributes. Uh, this will work, doesn't matter where you are. So let's say you want to copy this clip, which is selected, I'm gonna press here, copy, and if I press here, I'm gonna paste it. And I can cut out, and this one will cut, the first one, the left one will cut. Uh, and I can paste again using the right one, copy using the left one, and I can uh, copy and go to another clip, select it, and use out, and the right one will paste attribute. So you choose whatever you want, and hit apply. So this is cop, paste, cut and paste attributes. You can go to the color page and we'll do the same thing. So for example, if I have a treatment here and I add some nodes and I want cop and paste, I can go to the this clip and press here, copy, go to another node, press here, paste. Uh, I can select a clip here, let's say, I'm gonna select this clip where I am now and I am gonna hit copy and then go to another clip and I'm gonna press out and paste attributes and we will open the paste attributes as you can see from clip 8 to clip 3 which was 8 to 3 so I can use paste attributes on color page 2 that's it these are the default uh, buttons let's see uh, each panel now let's see all the functions on each mode Okay, now I changed the position of the table here so you can see better in the edit mode uh, and I press F9, choose edit mode and here I have all the tools to make uh, video edition. So this can work as a speed editor too, not only for color grading, you can use this as a speed editor. So you can do thousands of things editing, I never touch my keyboard or my mouse, I just use this to edit. So how this works? Uh, and I can play back here, let's say, and choose whatever I want, whatever I want to go. And uh, I can toggle between uh, the preview window and the timeline window using this knob here. So it's called active win. So what is the active window? And I'm right now, as you can see here, I'm in my timeline. It's red. But if I turn left, now here is red. red so I am in my preview uh, window and doesn't matter if I have just one so I can timeline preview timeline preview so if I open some clip here and I am in the preview window I will navigate on the preview window and I can do something like set an in out point and then I can go to my timeline and navigate on my timeline and do change on my timeline, okay? So this knob, active window, is to navigate between the two windows, and this is important because sometimes you will, I don't know, maybe select all, and it will say, oh, it's not selecting anything because it's not on timeline window, so you go to timeline 
and use select and we'll select everything. I can go there and back and to navigate on my timeline, I can turn this jog to zoom in and zoom out. As you can see, I can turn this knob to navigate on the timeline fast and I can turn this knob to move the clips frame by frame, which means I choose a clip. If I move this knob, as you can see it going frame by frame, I'm moving down. As you can see, I'm moving it. Uh, I can uh, select uh, the closest edit point and do the same, move the edit point. So I can change the in out points of a clip using this jog wheel. And of course, as you say, this one goes steps uh, frame by frame. I'm gonna zoom out a little and uh, let's see what how we can do an, a video edition. So uh, I can play back here and let's say I want this part until here, it's okay. I like this part, so I cut everything and I still keep going and uh, okay. From that put point where I cut to this point, I don't want. So I'm gonna delete start to playhead, which means we'll delete everything between this place here where I cut until my playhead. We'll delete this because I don't want that. So if I press it, that goes away and I keep editing. So I still going, this part is okay, I like it. Uh, I'm gonna cut here and uh, I don't want this part here. So again, the let's start to play head. Then uh, until here I want and the rest of the clip I don't want so I can go the let end to play head. So uh, uh, I will the let everything between the end of the clip until the play head. So I did that. I did a video edition very fast. I like this. I want this. So let's say I have more than one clip here, one on top of other, as you can see. If I hit the cut all timelines, we'll cut everything that is active. Of course, uh, I'm gonna undo this. If I have something locked, it will not cut that thing because it's locked. It will cut all the rest of the things, okay? Um, or if I don't have it active too, it will not cut that track too because it's not active. As you can see, it didn't cut. So I'm gonna Alt Z, Control Z again and active the timelines. Um, but I can cut only the clip. How I do that? I click here, closest clip, and it will select just that clip and I can cut just that clip. Or I can navigate between the clips using my mouse. So I'm gonna press F8 and go wherever I want. I want this one. I'm gonna click here and I can cut just that clip. I'm gonna Ctrl Z here and I'm gonna unselect this. So I do the video edition very fast. As you can see, if I press this button here, I choose the closest clip. If I press this button here, closest edit point. It goes directly to there. I can choose a clip and unlink and link these clips. Let me zoom in so you can see it's linked and now it's not linked anymore. If I choose with my mouse more than one clip here, let's say, and I'm gonna choose a lot of clips and I can link them and unlink them, link them and unlink them. And I have the option to backspace and delete. So let's say I'm gonna go forward here, uh, clip by clip. And um, I'm gonna select this clip. I can backspace it, of course, delete without move the timeline or I can delete it moving the timeline. This cover the buttons and on the second page of the buttons we have the edit page interface. So I can open and close my left expander, my media pool, as you can see. Uh, I can open my effects library, my edit index, my sound library which is a little slow. I can close it, I can open my mixer, my metadata and my inspector window. And when you open the inspector window, will automatically goes to the video option, but you can change between audio and video just using the tools you're gonna see. What more? Uh, I have the right expander here, of course. And that's it for the uh, pressing out key. The, I can just, will change the knobs here. And I have here some knob functions too. So as I said, I can navigate between timeline and preview using this knob. 
turning right and left and uh, I can use the first knob to set in turning to left and out turning to right and I can press it press the knob to reset this and this is a new feature we can press knobs to do some things and this is very nice so I can go to my preview window for example and uh, add an in point and out point as the same and press to reset uh, okay back to my timeline I can select forward and backwards so it will select everything forward and backwards let me put this here and will be better to see forward and backwards forward and backwards having the playhead as parameter so forward and backwards forward and backwards and if I press Alt key and use the same second knob here uh, I'm gonna select forward and backwards as the same here but only the active track so if I change my active track here as you can see I'm gonna change to A2 and V2 we'll just select uh, backwards that active track forwards that active track will not select anything else I can select all turning the third knob to right or deselect all turning to left and this means if I select forwards I can deselect all just turning this to left uh, the fourth knob is to add a marker so I add a marker and if I press I will edit that mark and I can remove the mark turning to the left and of course I can choose a clip and then add a mark to the clip so as you can see I added a mark or I removed the mark what more oh this is very good to video edition too so uh, I'm editing my clip here uh, let's say I'm here in this part and I will cut it and then I went forward uh, let me zoom in so this will be easier to see and I cut it again and then I go forward and cut it again and go forward and cut it again and I decide this clip here is not nice here I want to swap it I can just turn on this knob and that's it I just keep turning and I will swap clips going forward and backwards this is very nice uh, with the clip selected I can turn right to open my change clip speed window and I can turn left to open my speed change mode uh, selecting some gap like this some edit point like this I'm gonna zoom in and I can add a video transition pressing the knob I'm gonna add video and audio transition and turning to left I'm gonna add an audio transition turning to right I'm gonna add a video transition nice uh, and I have home and end here so I can go to the begin or end of the timeline fast here is the active window as we already saw and pressing out key uh, we have some selections for the two so selection tool blade tool and trim tool tool using uh, to the right so selection tool here blade tool here and trim tool turning to the right and turning to the left I have turn on and off the trim dynamic the dynamic trim okay turning left just turn left one time on turn left two times off on off and the rest of the buttons here is to insert clip override clip replace clip ripple override flip clip uh, fill to clip to fit to fill clip add to clip to the end so if I go to my preview here and I set an in and an out point and then I can press out and insert the clip on the timeline or I can overwrite the clip or I can uh, replace the clip one for the other one or I can ripple overwrite or I can fill to clip or I can add the clip to the end of the timeline so I have everything here very fast I just do whatever I want one more thing when you are in the second page using the the interface when you open a media pool as like this as you can see my mouse automatically move it to here to the corner of my media pool which means I selected that window 
So if I open the media pool and press out, I have here knobs where I can go up and down, left and right, and navigate between them and choose whatever clip I want and press, doesn't matter what knob, if I press it will open that clip. Uh, as the same, when I'm in the timeline and I select a clip, let's say this one, I can press out and the third knob here will go up and down, out, up and out, down is the shortcut. And that's it for the video edition, we have the inspector tools. So, uh, when I'm in the edit mode, uh, here on the corner, I have this go to inspector. Doesn't matter if I press out, it's still there, the go to inspector. And when I press this button, I open the inspector mode. And if I use some tool, it automatically open the inspector and start using that tool. For now, I have only transform tools and audio tool to control the volume. But in the future, I'm gonna create a way to control all the inspector. For now, we have only the basics. Uh, I can control the rotation, the zoom in and out. They are linked. I can unlink the zoom in and out and control separately. Position, I can flip. So I turn the knob to the right side and will flip vertically. Every time I flip, every time I turn to the right, it flip and unflip. And the same to the left, it flip and unflip on the horizontal mode. And if I hit it, I'm gonna reset it. Uh, and as the same, I'm gonna reset everything when I press the knob. I can control my anchor and I can control my pitch and my wheel. On the bottom of each knob, I have respective keyframes. So for the zoom, I have the keyframe zoom here. Oh, I have nothing selected, so it will not work. I'm gonna go to edit, go to my timeline, and that's it. Go back to inspector, and if I hit here, I'm gonna uh, keyframe the zoom, keyframe the rotation, keyframe the position, transform keyframe. It's on, bo uh, on, bot uh, on button of the flip, because flip doesn't have keyframe, so I put the transform one here, and then anchor has keyframe anchor, and if I press here, I have keyframes for pitch and yaw. And pressing out, I can control my volume, it goes to the second page, I can reset it, and I can keyframe it too. And at the end of the buttons pressing out here, I have reset transform and reset audio, which will reset both. And doesn't matter where I am, I can click here and go back to edit mode. Okay, I'm gonna back the panel to the uh, top left corner, because now we're gonna go to the color mode page. So I'm gonna hit here and now I'm in the color page and for the first panel here we have the first mode is nodes and scopes which means I'm gonna control my nodes and my scopes. If I press here I will add a serial node and if I press the second button a previous serial node. If I press, uh, let me reset this, if I press parallel we'll add parallel nodes as you can see and uh, I can press here to add layer nodes. I can add an outside node and I can add a splitter combiner node. Other thing I can do is track to node. So it's out of the node tree and for the nodes is that. I can press Alt key and control my scope. So I can go to parade, waveform, vector scope, histogram and the chromaticity graphic. So to finish the scopes we have here without press it we have display uh, focus which means when you come with your mouse you have the focus where you are and uh, we can turn off and on and the low pass filter you can turn on and turn off uh, on this key and that's it that finished the nodes and scopes and the next one is printer lights and as the default printer lights is off on the Vint Resolve, uh, you have to turn on. So you press here and now it's on. As you can see here, the option is selected. So you can control your printer lights using these knobs or these wheels, these jog wheels. Right, so uh, on the knobs I have full printer lights. So as you can see here, red and green and blue. 
cyan, magenta, yellow, and the master printer lights. And this is very good for me. Printer lights are the best tool in the Vint Resolve. Uh, and this is the full, so if you move, it moves a lot, but you can press out and you have half printer lights for the same red, green, blue, cyan. You can be softer and you can be even softer because here we have quarter printer lights. So I have master here. I can be very, very smooth as you can see, or go fast or very smooth, which is very different when you use a knob as you can see, even being, even being very smooth, it steps a lot. But here I can go just a little, uh, and then I have red, green, and blue. And if I press out, magenta, uh, cyan, magenta, and yellow and press out and this will not do nothing because it's a uh, red configured for another thing which is the node navigation so you know uh, anywhere you are if you use this will node navigate so just in the printer lights uh this is not working for step frame by frame only on printer lights mode any other mode in edit mode or any other panel this goes uh frame by frame as we know but for printer lights, I decided to put it to be the master one because I use it this tool a lot and I think it's very fast to have this on your hand. Okay, you can turn off here and let's go to the next one, which is primary wheels. On primary wheels, we have here the jog, of course, to control each jog. But this last one is not the fourth jog because this is step by step and we need that to have control of the fourth jog you just press out and use the third jog here and you are in the fourth one because we don't use too much the fourth one so normally you can press out and use it and as the same for the trackballs we have lift gamma gain and for offset we press out and offset and and that's another reason why i put the out jog here and not here because you're using red the one two three so one two three and four would be uh more logical right so this is uh, these are trackballs we can reset lift gamma and gain here we can reset offset here we can reset all the primary spaniel clicking this button here we have auto white balance uh, which will make that uh, automatically balance of your image and um, here we have color picker so we're gonna get the picker and we can turn on the mouse and navigate it where we are and uh, hit here with the left click and the picker is working. We have the black point picker, so same thing, go there with the mouse and click it and white point picker, same thing, go there with the mouse and click it. So we can turn off the mouse now and reset all the primaries and um, on top of it, we have temperature, tint, contrast, pivot, cool boost, uh, the shadow, the highlights, saturation, and hue. And if I press out, I have mid detail and loom mix. These two I put on the second page because on log wheels, they are on the first page because is where you use this more. And a nice feature from the Tangent Wave Booster 2, as I said, is have clicks on the knobs and you can reset each field just clicking on the knobs, which means uh, it doesn't matter. For example, here it's 50, the reset, so it will reset to 50. Uh, tinge is zero, so we will reset to zero. Uh, contrast is one, we will reset to one. So this is very nice because we can reset just one tool we don't need to reset everything and etc. So it's a great feature for this new version. And we have a second page here on top for the knobs, which is uh, lift, gamma and gain, control for RGB and Y, and then RGB and Y here on the middle. And I put this because we can separate, separate RGB, RGB, and pressing out, I have the gain RGB, and Y, and of course I have RGB for offset here. And the same, I can change something and reset to the respective value, which is one for the gain, 
or for the lift is zero for example okay for the next one is primary bars and it's almost the same i can bring here and uh, change the values of the the gamma lifting again using the knobs and same thing pressing out i have red green blue and y and red green blue for offset and i have a second page here uh, which is temperature and tint and etc and on this one uh, i have everything uh, like the same in the in the in the primary in primary wheels and reset lift gum again offset bars and everything else are the same uh, the only difference in fact is because on primary wheels uh, your first uh, bank here is the tools because normally you will work uh, in the primary bars with the first bank which is the 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 bars so it's just to be to be fast you can go to primary wheels and use tools if, you, if you're you're going use a tool or you can go to primary bars if you're going use the bars uh, the rest is the same uh, next one is log wheels and i have shadow uh, green red red green blue mid tones red green blue and highlights red green blue this one doesn't has lumina luma channel so i can put uh, shadow mid tones and highlights and if i press out i have offset here and always in the fourth and the same of course you can control the mid tones shadows and highlights using the trackball and offset pressing out we can reset everything clicking here and um, we have a second bank here with the tools which is temperature and everything else and here uh, we have out key so we have the most important tools for log wheels which is pivot low range and high range and then we have the rest of the contrast cool boost and saturation and uh, if I go here to the second page, I have temperature change, mid detail, shadow, highlight, and hue that are not too important on this tool because you can use them uh, on the other panel, the primary wheels and primary bars. But you have the tools here if you need on the second page. Going to the next one, HDR wheels. Everyone asked for this. Everyone said, oh, we need a tangent wave booster with HDR wheel support. And now we have. And this is very nice to work. We have one, two, three for the wheels, and pressing out, we have the fourth wheel. So if I started using here, I mean dark, shadow, and light, of course, because they are one, two, three, and the global one. But I can press here and navigate between them, as you can see, left and right. And now I have light, highlight, and specular. So it's the same. I move the light, highlight, and specular using one, two, three. And I can go here and use exposure for the first one saturation for the first one fallout for the first one same for the second one and same for the third one and if i press out i have the exposure and saturation for the fourth one it doesn't has uh, the follow i have temperature tint hue contrast pivot mid detail and black offset here so are the tools and uh, I can highlight the first one I have to press it so pressing the one the second one and the third one I can reset the one two and three and I can uh, reset the fourth one on the second page so I press here and I have here the reset for the fourth wheel still on the first page uh, I have open and close the HDR zone panel and I have the left and right as I said and I can go directly for any zone if I press the button so black zone dark zone shadow light highlight and specular and of course if you rename this or use another one you, you will have uh, more options for this but if you create new zones uh, of course you will not reach them if they are not in that position what more we have here the reset we can reset all the hdr or let me change the color and let me change something on the zone i'm going to dark and i'm going to turn this to change the max range as you can see the second wheel will change the max range and this one the fall off and i put on this two because it's the right side of the panel 
so fall off and max range here and I can reset just the color if I want and doing nothing on zones or I can reset only zone doing nothing on colors um, and when I use this for max range and fall off I can press this button here the first the left one and it will reset if I need so let's say I'm in the light zone and I change it and I want to reset I just press it and we reset that parameter the mean range and the fall off you can reset in these two buttons here okay we have uh, a second page in the buttons here not in the knobs but in the buttons we have a second page which will turn off and on each channel and show and hide each channel to its zone but uh, I don't think you should use this and if you use it uh, pay attention because uh, on the first page the left and right will, will not work anymore so the pen because the, the they're in different position you can go to the software and configure it to make it work again changing the position if you want but i think it's better use it in the normal configuration without change this and uh we are fine with six zones i think this is more than sufficient to work and we can control which zone just using the mean range and fall off so we are fine with that uh, i don't think we're gonna use this too much okay the next one is custom curves and this is another great update because everyone asked for curves in the latest version the custom curves was really really bad a thousand of limitations we just could use one custom curves and then when you use another one you lose the first one it was like a hell so for this version i worked a lot and i created a system that will work perfectly so it's amazing and i can go there let's say i choose all my custom curves and uh, i can just click here and add the default dots and that's it i can navigate between the dots just turning this jog wheel here it's nice right and when i choose some dots i can just move it using the trackball and choose another dot and moving the trackball and that's it I can navigate between them choose it and move and I can just press this button to delete a dot so if I want to use just two dots for example I can delete both and now I have a different curve here I can navigate between them and that's it very nice right I can click here to uh, turn on the the splines and uh, I can turn on my mouse mode and use it to move the splines because uh, we cannot navigate between the spine splines dots so this is a small limitations but you can use your mouse to control it and then you can turn off and still using your dots here uh, we can turn off the splines uh, we can use uh, just one curve let's say the G curve and that's it I'm gonna move here then I go to the red one and I'm gonna uh, sometimes it's almost never but sometimes it will not recognize the, the the dots as you can see so what you do is read all dots there is a function here called real read all dots after you click on it and it will work again but this doesn't happen a lot but sometimes can happen so uh, you can use this function I'm gonna go to blue and it's working fine and um, other reason to have the read all dots it's because you can put it on mouse mode and just move your mouse and create a point wherever you want let's say like this and if you do that uh, they, the software will not know where is the dots so you have to come here and read all the dots so it will recognize the dots uh, oh as you see it's not working because I'm in a mouse mode so I need to press F8 here and now I know where is all the dots if I go to the green I know where is all the dots so the read all dots is for when you use your mouse to create points or if something goes wrong and it doesn't recognize them the dots but this is almost never 
uh, you can use the read all the dots but normally everything works really fine I can put everything together again and read the dots and if I move of course it will reset all the other curves because I put all them together uh, I can control separately the intensity here of red green blue and luminance and I have control for the soft clip too I can have just red just green just blue or link it and I can control the soft low soft high and low soft high soft um, we have everything here it's, it's, it's really nice I, I really like this the system another thing I have here reset only the curves only the soft and reset everything in custom curves uh, there's no second page here for nothing and we can go to the next one which is hue curves and for this one we have buttons to set the default colors so red yellow green cyan blue magenta uh, and we can just press something green and use here to control input hue and the rotate but we can use the same system of the other uh, custom curves we can move here and we'll get the points and I can delete some dot if I need it and I can move it using my trackball and of course if something goes wrong I can click on read all dots to get it and there's a small limitation here which is this point here when you help when you have a half point because on this one you will never have a half point but on this one you have a half point and this will not be recognized so you just pull it to here and it's fine read all dots and now it's there you can use it and you're fine if you need to put it here you can put it here but you will lose it on the automatic tool selection here but this is almost nothing uh, okay after you use this you can you still can using this right and I can select hue versus hue, saturation, luminance, and then loom and sat, sat versus sat, and sat versus lumination. And here, for example, uh, in this tree, sat, loom, sat, 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 and sat, loom, uh, I have to use the mouse to create the points. So I'm gonna use this here. That's that's how it works. Uh, I can free the mouse and read the dots and start to using the trackball there's no problem or I can use this but as you can see move really fast because it's a short space so I can press out and this will move slowly and this in fact work for anything if you are in hue versus hue and uh, choose some color here you can move really smooth using out key you can press here to reset the fields as you can see and you can can reset the curves clicking here there's no second pages perfect let's go to the next one qualifier and we have nice things here on qualifier you can control your HSL heel and widget and soft and sim as you can see and you can go and back and, and you can control your saturation low and high and soft and pressing out you have your luminance same thing uh, and you have a second bank where you can go to head green and blue which is RGB HSL RGB qualifier tools uh, and the nice thing you can reset every one just pressing the knobs uh, and you can turn back just pressing here on the first page you can come back and start to using the HSL and you can turn on and off each one just go into the second page um, sorry you have to use here something so you're in the second page and you can invert your qualifier select picker picker subtract add feather subtract feather add and as i said the invert and uh, so you have all the controls for qualifier uh, there's a third page here on the knob so you have one 
for the qualifier, which is turn it off. You have second page for the RGB qualifier, and you have the third page for the mate finest, which is the noise, clean black, white black, clearing white, blur radius, and in out. And you can reset all them just pressing the knobs here. And if I press out, I have the second page, which I'm going to choose between the modes, turning right and left, the shape and radius, iterations, black clip and white clip. And I can reset each one just pressing here. And in the first page uh, is that, second page the red, and third page the mate finest. So very nice. Let's go to the next one power windows i can add a power window just pressing the buttons so i can add a linear power window or i can add a circle power window polygon curve gradient and uh, when i add something i can show and hide it and i don't know why there's a small bug on the vint resolve is this with is this is with the shortcut you need to press two times to hide and one time to show i don't know why this happens if you do the shortcut on your keyboard it will happen the same thing uh, another thing you can of course delete the power the power window and reset the power window these are the buttons but when you add a power window you can control the size the aspect pan tilt rotate and opposite and of course if i press out i have soft one two three and four and I have inside and outside here, we don't have it, but I think in Polygon we have it, so you can control inside and outside. And it's very nice because uh, control power windows using this is very, very fast. And if you want, of course, you can press F8 and go there and use your mouse to do whatever you want, create a point and everything else, so you're fine. Um, you can use the mouse or you can use the controls. There's no second page for this. And there's one more thing here. When I press out, I have uh, a way to add nodes with power window. So here I will add a new node with linear, a new node with circle, new node with polygon, and new node with curve. There's no default shortcut for the new node with gradient. I don't know why. So I'm gonna reset everything. I'm gonna reset this. And let's go to the next panel. The next mode is Blur, Sharpen and Mist. So I can link each one here, pressing this. And the last one, of course, it's closed because I'm in Blur. I can go to Sharpen and then I can use the link here to turn on and off, as you can see. Uh, and then I can go to Mist and it's the same. Uh, I can reset each one and I can press Alt here and control the 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 functions here on the bottom so i'm in the mist so i can control the mix and reset it and if i go to sharpen i can control level and coring softness and uh, in, in each one i can control red green and blue radios hv ratio red green blue and scale red green and blue if i'm in blur of course this one will not work uh, so this cover all this part of the blur sharp and miss there's nothing than that uh, let's go to the next one which is rgb mixer very simple too we have red output green output blue output red green blue red green blue red green blue and this reset each ones for their default values as you can see the green is one, the head is one, and we can invert the channels pressing here. The reset for each one, we can go on and off the monochrome and the preserve luminance, and we can reset all the panel. Uh, very simple, directly. Next one is key, another very simple one. We can uh, turn the knobs to gain, offset, blur, and blur HV. We have output gain and output offset and qualifier gain and qualifier offset on the buttons input and um, uh, mate and mask for key input and the key output key qualifier mate and mask what more um, we have here 
the last one is motion effects. In motion effects, I can press Alt key and control the temporal noise reduction frames going back and forward. I can choose the motion estimation type going back and forward. I can choose the motion range. So I want to choose here the better and the small. And I want four frames. Okay. And then for the second part here, I have motion blur. So motion estimation type, motion range, and I can adjust the blur. And the third one is the spatial noise reduction. I can change between them here. And after I release it, I have soft luma, chroma, and blends. I can link and unlink this function, not in this mode. Okay, in this mode I can. So I can unlink the functions and of course I can reset each one. I have on the first one without out key, I can control luma, chroma and motion. I can unlink them and control separate a little and there's the blend here. So I try to put temporal noise reduction, uh, spatial noise reduction and when you press out in the middle is the motion blur. Uh, we have more here, reset temporal noise reduction, reset temporal threshold, sp spatial noise reduction, spatial threshold, reset, reset motion blur and reset all the motion effects and that's it for the motion effects. We are almost in the end, there's two more things to say. Uh, here we have uh, pressing out, we have the project settings if you want to see the project settings and we have DaVinci settings if you want to see the DaVinci settings this is pressing F9 in the mode selections we're gonna press out and there's these three last buttons here with project settings, DaVinci settings and reset default which means it's, it, it, if something went wrong and uh, looks bugged or something are open instead closing or something like that uh, you can press this button here out and reset default which will bring everything to default mode so i'm gonna press it and the mode will become in the full screen everything we reset the davinci layout and we'll bring back to a git page and now everything is in the place and you can start to using again and will not be bugged for example uh, let's say i'm using my 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 tangent wave here and i just forget i'm using it and I use my mouse to go here and, I don't know, close the inspector. And now my panel thinks the inspector is open, but it's closed. So I, if I start to use a tool, he thinks it's open it. And as you can see, it's trying moving something that is not there. And he don't automatically open because he thinks it's already open. So you need to come with your mouse and open it again. So you're fine. It's working and if you close here on edit mode, if I close it, then I can go there on the inspector again and it will open automatically. Uh, but if you, I don't know, got lost, uh, go to the color page without use some panel here. So you have to come here and move something. But uh, if something looks wrong, if you are in a edit page and can control the color page without automatically uh, change to color page, if something looks wrong, go to the F9 and reset the fault and you are fine. Everything will work again. The last thing I have to say is, doesn't matter what panel you are, if you are in printer lights or primary wheels or HDR wheels or custom curves, hill curves, doesn't matter, power windows, whatever color page you are on the second bank of the buttons. So I'm nodes and series. If I press down arrow, I'm in the second bank and doesn't matter log wheels if i press down arrow i'm in the second banks for the buttons and in this second bank i have control of my color interface so it can turn on and off the image wipe and in this button i can change between the white modes i can turn on and off my split screen my highlights as you can see and i can toggle zoom view to full 100% or fit to screen. And I have control of my nodes mode, the nodes mode one, clip and timeline, as you can see. And if I add this to a group, 
So let me add this to a new group. And I have four modes here. So I have node mode one, which is pre clip, clip, post clip, and timeline. And I can navigate between them. So one and two, when I have just two modes, or one, two, three, four, if I have four modes, I can go fast between them. Uh, pressing Alt key, I can go to gallery. Let me change here. So I can go to Alt key with gallery, LUTs, media pool timeline, my clips, and my notes, open effects, and turn on and off my light box. So I can navigate between all this very fast using the Alt key. And there's one more here, which is cursor and hand. I can change between them. Um, so on the second page, we have always control of the interface so it's fast doesn't matter where you are you just go to the second page and start to using the the tools on um, here on hdr wheels it's on the third page now but i will change this i will put on the second page so i will keep everything every time in the second page and the third page will be the on off and things like that because we don't use that too much so i will put that on the third page just in case that you want to use that's it we cover all the functions of the Tangent Wave Booster and in the future, of course, I'm going to work for the tracking panel, which is not there yet, uh, the sizing panel and maybe the color warper and that's it. I will not work in Camera Raw because they are very different depending on what type uh, of file you're using, so there's no reason to use it uh, on here. You can use it with your mouse, but uh, I will improve with new things as soon as possible this okay so to keep me doing that don't forget go to our website click on the link there on the qr code and make a donation so i can keep going with this project hey that was great right i know there's some things that i should implement in future but uh as you can see the tangent wave booster 2 can control thousands of things and works amazing I hope you like this project, I hope you enjoy Tangent Wave Booster 2 and see you in the next video.